Hello everybody, welcome to today's Engine Professional Super Webinar. We appreciate you joining us. My name is Amanda Harmoning and I am an admin assistant here at AERA and I will be moderating today's event. Joining me from the AERA team is Rob Monroe and Steve Fox. Hey everyone, yeah, Rob Monroe here. I look after membership and technical development over at AERA. Now I'm super excited for today's event. I mean, to have four presenters of this caliber to all get together for one event, it's a huge treat for us. So uh, what we're gonna do is we'll have Amanda and Steve and I, we're all gonna be in the background. We're gonna help answer any questions you have throughout the webinar. Now, if you've been onto our webinars before, this is just a little bit different format than our usual ones. So each presenter will have a Q&A session at the end of each presentation. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those questions and you can do them both live as well as from the questions box. So you have two choices there. And uh, Amanda's gonna show you how to explain all that. She'll do that in the control panel. So we'll do that in a few minutes, but right now I'll go over to Steve for a minute and let him introduce himself. Welcome everybody to the first ever super webinar hosted by AERA. My name is Steve Fox and I'm the operations manager here at AERA. Uh, to begin, I'd like to thank those four uh, industry leading professionals that are here with us today for taking the time out of their day to join us for this webinar, as well as you, the attendees, uh, for coming along and um, taking time out of your day as well. Like Rob said, I'll be reviewing questions and ask, answering those questions or asking them to the panelists uh, throughout the day. Um, and again, you're not here to listen to me, so let me get it back to Amanda, and she can go over some of the housekeeping items and the options on asking the questions today. Amanda. All right, we'll try and keep this quick here. First off, there are a couple different ways to listen in. The first is to listen in via telephone. If you do this, please make sure to enter your access code and audio pin. That audio pin will be essential today if you decide to use our raise hand option, which I will explain in a little bit. The other option is to listen in with your computer mic and speakers. And again, just make sure you have the appropriate radio button selected so that we do have that ability to mute and unmute your line. Uh, lastly, if you're experiencing any audio issues at any point, feel free to send me a message in the questions box or shoot me an email at amanda at AERA.org. I do watch that during the webinar and do my best to get back to you guys and get those resolved. A um, couple other things. There is a grab tab. This is a little orange box. You can click on this to collapse and expand your control panel. This just helps get it out of the way so you can view the presentations in full screen when you're not using it. And at the bottom, you'll see that questions box. This is one of two ways you'll be able to ask a question today. You can also get a hold of us there if you have any other comments, questions, anything like that. Um, the other option we're going to have today, which is kind of new, is that we are going to give you guys the option to raise your hand and ask a live question. To do this, you just find that little hand with the green arrow, and you can use that to raise your hand. And if you choose to lower your hand, you just use the hand with a red arrow and that will lower your hand back down. Um, this is where it is essential that you have that access code en entered if you are calling via phone because otherwise I will not be able to unmute your line for you to ask your question. Once I see you, I will add you to the queue and when you are next, I will go ahead and I will send you a message letting you know that I will be unmuting your line. Please listen for me to use your first name and um, at that time, it will be time for you to ask your question. We do ask that you keep those questions technical. And from there, we will go ahead and mute your line again and move on. But you will see that little orange chat box appear when I do send that message. So that will be your way of knowing that you have a message from me and that you are coming up and I will do my best not to botch your name, but I make no promises. I apologize in advance if I do mess up your name. Um, at this time, I'm gonna hand things back over to Rob so he can go over a couple other things and we'll keep things rolling. Right on, super, thanks Amanda. I'll just do a couple quick short slides and then we get on with bringing on today's presenters. Now, for those of you that are on today and you're not really sure who AERA is, uh, the Automotive Engine Builders Association We've been around for a really long time. We've been around since 1922. And we're made up of engine professionals that include builders and rebuilders. We have installers and parts supply manufacturers that are part of our membership, as well as we have schools and government agencies. And we have over 2,000 members worldwide. Now, we're, we're big believers in doing events like we are today, You know, getting together, networking, and learning from each other. 
and I love this slide right here. I mean, this is back in 1926, and you can see all these folks gathered around, and they're probably at an AERA convention. It looks like they were, you know, on May 29th back in 1926, and they're doing just like we're doing today. They're learning from each other, and they're get, get together and networking. And uh, again, that's to, to create an event like we have today to be able to do what we can, especially in what with, with what's going on with COVID-19. We're doing our best to bring it to you this way. And uh, again, it's it's a really great opportunity. Now, for those of you that are on today, um, you should have got your quarter two Eng Professional magazine that will have arrived in the mail for you. And we just finished up wrapping up our quarter three edition for 2020. So these are always jam packed with articles. There's uh, um, articles in there that you can apply right to your shop right away and take it back to you with you Monday morning. So if any of you are looking to and you're not getting our magazine right now and you would like to just let us know in that questions box today and uh, we'll uh, We'll get that over to you. We'll get your contact information and we'll get that mailed out to you. So you can do that as well. If you want to look at any of our archived articles, you can strictly go to www.engineprofessional.com and we can get that uh, over to you as well. A um, couple things. I just want to let everybody know that even with COVID and what's going on, we're still running at full throttle at AERA. So you can still reach us on the tech line. We're Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, nothing stopped there for us, and uh, so we're still going 100%. And again, if you have any questions or anything, we can answer that in the questions box, uh, stuff with 8-year-A. Other programs that we also look after here at 8-year-A, we have our Process Pro software. Uh, we load it up. We've got just over 10,600 engines now in that software. So it's, uh, it's a huge program, as well as we have our online training program. That's another thing that we look after here at 8-year-A. All right, well, let's get on with uh, what's going to shape up and how things are going to look today. So what we're going to have is we're going to have uh, we're going to have introduced um, everybody here in just a few minutes. We'll let everybody get a chance to uh, to tell a little bit about themselves. Presentation number one, that's going to be Lake Speed Junior Total Seal Piston Rings. There will be a Q&A session following each presenter. It'll be about 30 minutes long and then we will have a small break. Um, we're going to give away some prizes today. We're also going to uh, um, you know, give everybody a chance to grab a snack and just have a, a quick break if there is time. Presentation number two, we're going to have Billy Godbold at Comp Cams. Then presentation number three is going to be Keith Jones of Total Seal. And our final presenter uh, will be Ben Strader of EFI University. So we are going to leave time at the end. Uh, we, we will have a flank right around 4.15 central time. We're going to leave time for a Q&A wrap up at the end. And we're going to bring everybody back on. So Get your questions jotted down and uh, get them in that questions box, and then we'll get those over to everybody at the end. So, uh, all right, well, enough of me speaking. I mean, like, let's get on with today's event. So, Lake, Billy, Keith, Ben, how are you guys all doing? Doing great. Very good here. Super. Happy well, uh, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Well, I'll let, I'll let you guys decide who's going to go first, but yeah, just fire away and uh, let's hear a little bit about what you guys got going on. We're all in the lake. Why don't we go in order? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay. We'll go in order then. <laughs> all right. Um, so I, uh, I am Lake Speed Junior. Uh, thank you everybody for for tuning in today. This is really incredible. Thank you for AERA for uh, hosting us. Uh, for those who who don't know me, uh, during my presentation, I have a little bit of slide, but uh, my dad uh, is Lake Speed uh, Senior, the former NASCAR driver. Also, kind of almost more famously, the only American to win the 1978 World Go-Karting Championship, and he beat a guy named Ayrton Senna that people said was a pretty good race car driver. Uh, Keith and I had the chance to go to the Phoenix Art Museum but about two months ago, I guess it was, Keith, uh, and see like the Carl. Legends of Speed, and they had this fantastic exhibit uh, of all these legendary cars and stuff, you know, that from early Formula One cars, you know, Grand Prix cars, uh, uh, Le Mans, the actual car that won Le Mans, the GT40, and things. Yeah, so got a motorsports background in history. Uh, I'm a certified uh, lubrication specialist, a uh, member of a group called the Society of Tribologists. There you go, Ben, and lubrication engineers. You can keep it count, right, Ben? You can keep count today. Uh, Obviously, the four of us know each other pretty well, and we're going to probably joke on a little bit. I think that's one advantage of this format is that we don't have to be maybe as uh, formal. We can be a little more informal, and I hope that's going to be the case, especially with the Q&A. That's one of the reasons why we wanted to have more open Q&A 
uh, to hear from you and make it more interactive and not just us talking all day at everybody. So with that, um, that's me. I guess I'm me. next, huh? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm Billy Godbold. Um, I've been at Competition Camps for 25 years over the Valtrain Engineering Group for at least 24 of that. Um, background to nuclear physicist, so if you ever need somebody who can put the fizz into a soda pop, I actually have a degree in that. Um, you know, just um, very excited to get to talk to everybody today, share a little bit about what's going on, Try to do a broad-based presentation, scrunch it into 30 minutes, see what questions pop up, because I'm hoping, I'm going to go through the slides fairly quick, I hope we'll be able to go back and look at stuff and have some good Q&A, especially at the end with this whole group, because we really are good friends, and it's fun to hear all of us kind of talk about the same subject at the end. Well, I guess you, that Keith. Means, I see, yeah, it's a toss-up to me. Hi, this is Keith. I'm been with Total Seal 24 years. I'm the director of technical sales, uh, originally from the Chicago area. Uh, grew up in a racing household, always been around this kind of stuff. Uh, old man ran gassers back in the 60s, hung out at Arnie the Farmer Beswick shop, Mr. Pontiac. So kind of got a little Pontiac blue running in my veins, but, uh, but I appreciate everything out there. Uh, here at Total Seal, we are gearheads. We are racers. I mean, from Matt Hartford, our CEO, running NHRA Pro Stock and, and setting the new record in Florida, which was, you know, so impressive. So these guys worked so hard over the years to get where they've gotten. Uh, it's just very unfortunate because of COVID that the, the season's delayed at the time. But uh, my point is, we're, you know, we're very active in this. We don't just manufacture parts. We race what we make uh, and we enjoy the heck out of doing it. And as Billy said, uh, they're, they're fairly short presentations. So we're going to try to pack a lot into a short period of time. So uh, hang on, it's going to be a whirlwind, but please ask questions, put them down. We love answering the questions, uh, and your question will lead to another question that we may have not thought of. So, uh, like I say, don't be afraid to raise your hand and ask a question. We love it. Mr. Strader. Right on. Hey, everybody, I'm Ben Strader over here at EFI University, uh, and I'm just thrilled to be here with all of you guys and with all of these guys because, uh, you know, I, I feel like. Uh, standing in the presence of giants. Uh, we started we started this school 17 years ago now, and the original goal was to teach people about EFI and fuel injection and engine tuning. Uh, but over the years, while that's been really great for us, uh, we recognized that the demographic had changed. You know, when I, when I started this program in 2003, what we had was a bunch of engine builders uh, that were used to carburetors and distributors and maybe were really intimidated by the computer thing. And so there was a huge hole in the market. And, uh, you know, fuel injection has been unbelievably good to me over the years. It's taken me all around the world, met some amazing people. I got caught up in groups like this and uh, it's, it's provided a lot of opportunities that maybe I wouldn't have gotten otherwise. But along the way, I noticed uh, that the trend was changing and, you know, where it used to be uh, older guys that were building engines and not sure how to tune them, what we started to see was a lot more younger guys who were really computer savvy, but sometimes didn't know the difference between a crankshaft and a connecting rod. Um, I, I've literally had, you know, 15 and 16 year old kids come through our program and they, they know all the buzzwords, they know all the terminology for computer and tuning and hooking up a laptop, but lack a real fundamental understanding of how the engine works. And so, um, we started to add to our program a few years back, probably four or five years ago, and, and now we have a complete engine development program, and that's led to opportunities to work with guys like Lake and Keith and Billy, and we've all been friends a long time, and so it was just awesome to go from, you know, hanging out to each other at the trade show, with each other at the trade shows, to now we get to actually work together and do meaningful research and, and projects, so I'm super thankful for that. I'm glad to be here with all of you guys, and I hope that whatever I have to add today will will bring value for you guys. So uh, I'll shut up and give somebody else the mic, and we'll get we'll get going on this thing. <laughs> Super guys. Well, we we got a few minutes before Lake's first presentation. So um, Lake, let me ask you. I I kind of noticed I, I was on your social media stuff there, and you were uh, working on a little 250 cc engine, and uh, maybe yeah, no, that looked super cool. So maybe just share with us like. Uh, um, uh, what are some of the projects, and I'll start with Lake, but what are some of the upcoming stuff we can expect? What have you been working on or what's coming down the pipe? Well, that was like I said yesterday, I was over at my dad's yesterday, which is kind of funny. 
walked into dad's shop yesterday and uh, he's back in the old cylinder head porting room and he's got the die grinder in there porting a cylinder on a two cycle engine. So I, I got a couple of slides in my thing just to say how dad's doing. But, you know, so the old engine shop at, you know, Lake Speed Inc. Is, you know, if you don't know, uh, dad, for most of dad's career in NASCAR, he was uh, owner driver. So we had our own shop, built our own engines, built our own cars, all the stuff. We actually have the car he won with at Darlington in 88 still there in the shop. It's just got a Thunderbird body on it. So dad's, you know, we're, we're full on head over heels into this vintage go-karting stuff. Um, I was telling Keith the other day, I got to get some videos for him. We've got these twin engine 135 cc, uh, you know, go karts that are just super fast, wicked cool, and you know, two cycle on methanol. I mean, the sound and the smell of these things is just phenomenal. You know, the smell of castor bean oil in uh, methanol in the morning and that little cr little chirp, little crackle, crass, you know, sound of a two stroke is just fantastic. So dad's working away on that, which again, we all of us together, you know, I was like, hey, wait. He was getting that thing together because he's going to send it out to get it uh, Nicosil, uh, you know, coated because it was basically too big now uh, for and to keep the bore stroke ratio he wants. He's going to send it up to Millennium to get it coated. And I'm like, hey, when we get it back, let's grab handy dandy profilometer and let's check it to make sure we know what the surface finish is, which we're going to talk about that more today. All of us probably will. Um, just to make sure we've, we've, we've got a good handle on what we have baseline now when we get it back from Millennium, since Millennium's going to be the one uh, honing it versus us, we can compare the notes to see what that surface finish is of what Millennium sends back versus what he's normally doing. So that's some kind of fun stuff. So we'll be showing that, right? So that's one nice thing about being at Total Seal now, which, you know, is fantastic because I can take, take everything that I learned at Gibbs, at Driven, working with Billy and Ben and Keith, and we can bring it all together and we're gonna be showing more of that. You know, it's kind of like what Ben's doing with you know his competition engine development program class, which by the way is super, super cool because it's you're taking an engine like Spinal Tap, like the small block 40 did, and you're showing everybody what it is. It's not being secretive, it's not being hidden away where you can't be seen. That was one of the coolest thing that Matt, Matt was doing, you know, last year. And hopefully we get a chance to do maybe some more of it this year. You know, the videos on Matt social media where he took Joe Costello and he's rebuilding a clutch, rebuilding a transmission, you know, changing the valve springs in a pro stock car. Stuff that is super secret is being shared. So that's one really cool thing that I think people have to look forward to is that, you know, we're learning through all of this and we're taking advantage of these kind of platforms to be able to show what we're doing and not keep it hidden in secret so that people could access it. So guys, you know, like Demas that was in the class and Marcus that were in the class can make that step from, yeah, I know computers, but I don't know engines necessarily to make that step and be able to move forward in their career. So we have a next generation of guys to do this. Hey, Lake, that, that two stroke thing, is that why I have this weird engine in my desk that doesn't have a camshaft in it? <laughs> yeah, like on a mount, not, like a go profilometer would stick up in there. Yeah, that was what that was for. <laughs> it's it's a kind of blasphemy to send a two-stroke engine to a cam guy, isn't it? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Unless he's a so, nuclear physicist. True. I've been looking for where the cam goes for a while. Can you make this? How about you, Billy? What 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 what's coming down the pipe at Comp? What's uh, what is some of the stuff you've been working on? You know, really, this this has been a super exciting time. Um, you know, we've basically gone in and turned everything that we're doing on profile development kind of on its head the past five years. Um, ben was a very early adapter to that, probably because of necessity. We kept blowing up his Spinal Tap engine, and um, now that's kind of going on through through the masses. Um, really starting to learn about and talk about designing packages as systems instead of components. I think there's a, a lot of misconception about components versus systems. Um, Keith and I will both be talking a lot about material technology and about tribology, um, surface engineering, especially surface engineering and materials. And everything is just growing at such an amazing rate. 
it's hard to imagine. Ben showed me something that was what um, four years old. To the, you know, if you look at four-year-old technology versus what we have today, the four-year technology just it makes you look at it and go, "Well, bless your heart, you're still running that." And you know, I had a friend stop um, stop one business, went to another. He wasn't gone 18 months, and by the time he came back for a professional type engine, everything that he was running then was obsolete now. So it really is. It's a super cool time, and we're excited to talk about it today. All right, and how about you, Keith? What uh, what's uh, what's going on in your world right now? Well, kind of like Billy said, I mean, it's it's you know, it's an unfortunate situation that the country is in, but it's it's found a lot of people with a little extra time on their hand, and mm -hmm. it's allowed us to work with these guys to develop the next generation of parts, as, as Billy was saying, working on material technologies, coating technologies, and, and just ring designs. How far can we push it from you know, our gas ported rings and our total conform rings? There's there's guys out there that's like, hey, you know, we're busy, but we're not that busy. Maybe we can finally try some of this stuff. Maybe we can you know, do proof of concept and, and, and get it out there. We work with a lot of different customers, you know, besides our own abilities. Uh, we, we depend on a lot of different people because there's a lot of different kinds of engines out there from you know, F1 all the way down to a karting engine to a, you know, everything in between. And, and working with these guys individually, we're able to uh, get some new designs out there and things that we, you know, we think will work, but get them into real, hands and real applications because there, there's no better feedback than the real world. Uh, we can run it on a dyno, do all that kind of stuff, but trust me, the things that we think are brutal and the things we think that we could do to damage it, not even close to what happens in the real world. Trust me, if they can break it, they'll figure out a way to do it. So it, it's been, you know, we'll say it's an unfortunate situation, an unfortunate situation, because it, it's given some of our, our, our val you know, very valued partners uh, the time to, to work on some new projects. Okay, and Ben, I, I know your world's probably changed drastically with virtual learning and that kind of stuff right now. Maybe just share what, uh, you know, how's that going? Uh, you know, surprisingly, it's going pretty well. We were pretty nervous at first when they closed everything down because I'm a firm believer in that uh, there's never going to be a replacement totally for live, in-person, you know, hands-on training. We were joking earlier about it would be really tough to teach somebody how to use a feeler gauge online. You know, hey, this is what it's supposed to feel like, you know. Uh, and so for us, that's been a little transition. Now, luckily, we've been uh, doing some online training for four or five years now. And so while our live and in-person stuff obviously ground to a halt, our online stuff luckily has taken up the slack for us. But, you know, the benefit to having all this uh, spare time is we never run out of projects here. Um, you know, I, I say all the time, at EF University, we only teach the things that we want to learn. And what I mean by that is I don't really consider us an engine shop. We don't have, we have a few, but not very many actual engine customers where we build and supply racing engines for them. But we build engines on some of the highest levels out there, primarily for research and development so that we can learn the things that people want to be taught. So, you know, it's not just uh, using the same old curriculum that we were using 20 years ago because people will pay for it. If we get stale, the whole industry starts falling behind. And and I think um, Keith touched on exactly that. You know, one of the greatest things that happened last year in NHRA Pro Stock was somebody had the guts to finally step out of, you know, Pro Stock is super voodoo magic, chicken bones, top secret stuff and say, hey, we're going to take the valve covers off and let you do it. And that's kind of what we do here. We try to we try to build the stuff that everybody else is afraid to try. And we're in a unique position to be able to do that because our engines don't have a deadline or a customer that's waiting to make a race. So most engine shops, unfortunately, just can't afford to take a chance on new technology. They don't know what's going to happen. Or, you know, the engine is a series of dependent events. So I might have this thing over here that's that's good or that's better. But if I put it in my engine, it might not mesh well with 20 other things. And so as an engine supplier, I can't afford to take that risk. But as an R&D house, which is basically what we are, I mean, we have four dynos in the building. We have two roller dynos, a hub dyno, an engine dyno, a spintron, uh, CNC equipment to do some of the machining work and plasma table that we can make and, and try stuff. We have the advantage that un unfortunately a lot of people don't, and that is we don't care if it blows up. And some days we're actually rooting for something to fail because I've never learned anything on the days that everything went right. If we build an engine and say it should make 600 horsepower and we put it on the dyno and it makes 600 horsepower, we didn't learn anything. It did what we thought. 
It's when we put it on the dyno and that 600 horsepower engine only makes 490 and we go, what just happened? And we dig in and we start researching and learning. That's the advantage that we have at EFI University and getting to work with people like Lake and Keith and Billy and the pro stock teams that we get to work with and the NASCAR guys that we get to work with allows us to have access to information that isn't shared publicly hardly ever. And so it gives us an avenue to package it and, and give people access to stuff that previously just seemed like mystery and magic. So all this time we've been sitting around, not sitting around, but waiting for the world to go back to work. We've been grinding away, building engines and testing stuff and running the dyno and trying to wear stuff out. So it's actually been a super exciting time for us. And frankly, I can't wait to go back to doing real classes and share some of the stuff that we've learned even in the last few months, you know, Billy said, if you got stuff that's four years old, I'm sure it works and it's good. And we're not saying we, you should throw it away. But frankly, if you have camshafts or, or valve train stuff that's four months old, there's probably newer stuff out there. And so we're really proud to be a part of that and get to get to play with all that new stuff. And, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes we end up having to build a spinal tap engine three times or something like that. But the reward is always worth the effort. And I'm, and I'm super stoked to be able to do it. I just want to touch real quick on what Ben said. Uh, th this is a very common thing that I hear right now in this time because uh, th there's so many, we'll say, crazy ideas that we come up with that we you know, we work with a customer. Hey, can you? What do you think? You want to try this? I, I really think this is going to work well. Let's see how it does in your application. Uh, and I'll call them in a few weeks. It's like, hey, what do you think? Well, we haven't had time to touch it yet. And then a couple of months goes by. Well, we haven't had time to touch it yet. And and what's happened in the economy of racing is you know, four or five, ten years ago, you know, pick your time frame. Uh, especially in the circle track world, these guys would have four, five, six engines in their trailer. And when they got back into the area of the, of the engine builder, they might drop off three of those engines to be built, come back in a few months, pick them back up. Well, today they've got one engine. If they're fortunate, maybe they've got two. So that engine hits the door on Monday. They expect to pick it up on Thursday and go racing. So the ability for the builders to actually test and do R&D and develop uh, has diminished greatly. So this time, again, as unfortunate as it is, has given a lot of them the opportunity to do the things that Ben does uh, passionately and test things and try things. And uh, I think coming off of this, as the world gets back to some kind of a normal, uh, you're gonna see some big jumps in power. Uh, I have some customers reporting back that, you know, things that they finally tried and it's like, wow, that really worked. Can't wait to be able to put that into my package. But, you know, from a time point of view, they had to make sure that what they did was reliable, as Ben said, there's so many things that, you know, it all works together, it's all links in a chain. If they throw one bad link in there and the whole thing fails, well, you know, that's an engine pulled up and they've got an upset customer. So now they've been able to test it, try it, prove it, and it's going to become part of their package. So there is there is an upside down world this time. 